Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be showing you how to play and download the Squid Game minimap on your server. There will be timestamps in the description if you wish to jump to a specific section. Firstly, I'm going to be showing you an overview of the map and some of the minigame features, but later on I'll be showing you how to get it working on your server. Upon entering the world, you'll spawn in the main room, where you can see signs with credits to the creators of the map. It is important to note though, that to be able to edit commands and use command blocks, you will have to enable cheats. You should automatically have a blue leather uniform on, but if you don't, you can head to the front of the room on the right, and if you step on the blue pressure plate, it will give you the attire. From there, you can navigate to the dark alleyway at the front of the room. Once you turn left, you'll see that there are signs labelled 1, 3, 5 and so forth. These are the game numbers according to the order of the show. There is no necessary order of games you have to follow, so you can start at whichever game you please. However, if you do want to follow the order on the show, you should go into game 1 and follow the path. It may take a couple seconds, but eventually you'll reach the end of the alleyway, and you'll see that you are now in the red light green light room. In this first challenge, participants should be over this red line, but if you're the host, you'll want to stay behind it in order to have a better view of everyone. If you don't already have a commands book, under the door there is a command block you can use to get it. In this book, you'll see that there is a page saying red light. If you click it, it displays that message on the screen. The next page will also do the same. What you want to do is click back and forth from red light to green light and kill whoever keeps moving after pressing red light. Alternatively, you could simply use your voice. When the round is finished, you and the remaining participants can go back through the hallway you came from and follow the path again. To go to the next challenge, you'll want to walk down until you see game 2 and follow the path until you reach the honeycomb room. All you have to do here is let the contestants pick a shape and then direct them over to whichever side their shape is. Around that shape, there will be honeycomb squares. These are what your participants will use to carve out their shape, following the template in the middle as a guide. If any contestant messes up even one block, they get eliminated. Once that round is complete, you follow the previous steps and head back to the game selection hallway. Follow the path to game 3 and you will reach the tug of war challenge room. Here you will have two participants, each run to the side and use this bubble elevator to reach the top. As soon as there's a participant on each side, you should give them a fishing rod. Let them go back and forth until someone pulls the other into the middle and gets eliminated. And then press this button over here to open the doors so the winner can get back down. Heading to the next game, you'll reach the marbles challenge room. In this challenge, players will have to form groups of two and locate themselves near a dispenser. Your contestants each pick one block they want to use as marbles and then place 10 of each block into the dispenser. They will take turns shooting their marbles out and once someone lands a marble inside the hole, they get to collect all 20 marbles. The first person to collect the other's marbles wins. And when there is a winner for each team, you can proceed to the next game. In the Glass Stepping Stones challenge, players will have to choose a number by heading over to a designated armor stand. Once all players have done so, line them up in ascending order. One at a time, the contestants should head up this ladder. Here, they'll have to jump on one block from each row until they reach the end. They should choose wisely though, because picking the wrong one will cause the block to break, and then they will be eliminated. In order to enable the breaking blocks though, the host of the game will want to head over to the left side of the room. This is where you'll see several command blocks laid out. You'll then have to open the command blocks and change the cords to the cords of the block you want to break once someone steps on it. You will have to reposition the blocks in the exact same position as before though for the next contestant. Once all players fate has been decided, you head into the final game. For this challenge, all you have to do is let your participants decide if they want to be offense or defense. The players who have chosen offense stay on this side of the room. The players who have chosen defense stay opposite. They're in charge of defending the squid head. The aim of this round is that offense must evade defense and reach the squid head. This means players are now free to fight to the death. Whichever side carries out their job and stays alive wins. Firstly, you can use the link in the description to get to the official download page. Scroll down to where it says download Minecraft map 
and upon clicking it, if it opens up another page, simply wait for the ad to finish for your file to be downloaded. You'll then have to extract the zip in order to get the map folder. To make the next step easier, make sure you move this folder to a place where you can easily access, for example, your desktop. Firstly, you're going to have to go to the server.pro website and access your server control panel from there. At the dashboard, make sure that the server version matches the map version to ensure no complications. The creator has stated that the map version is 1.17.1. However, this may change in the future, so please check before continuing. Before proceeding to the next step, quickly confirm that the server is offline. Afterwards, head over to the Files tab. Here you'll see a couple different files, but the only thing we need to do right now is select the world folder and delete it. Then we click the upload button in the top right. When this window appears, you select folder and navigate to the area you saved the world folder previously. Clicking upload, you'll be prompted with this pop-up. Click upload and upload again. It'll take a couple seconds for the files to upload. However, when it's done, you want to select the folder and rename it to something simpler such as Squid Game. It is important to note though that spaces and special characters are not allowed. For the next step, you'll want to copy the name you just renamed the world to, proceed onto the server.properties file, look for level name on line 9, and after the equals, right click and paste. Now you have officially uploaded the map onto your server. You can now head back to the dashboard to turn your server back on. Keep in mind though that you and your friends will have to copy this host name and paste it into the multiplayer section of Minecraft in order to join the server. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching.